If you get caught up by the complexity of the subject in front of you and you don't know how to handle it, I'm gonna show you in this video one way and a very important way of handling that. In fact, this could be one of the most important fundamental things that you need to know as a watercolorist. In fact, as an artist. Welcome to Sluga Channel. If you want to improve your watercolor, if you just have an interest in watercolor, if you just love hanging around watercolor, consider subscribing, hit that bell so I don't miss out on any of the watercolor stuff that I do on this channel. I know, I know, I know, I promised that I would do part two of how to set up the palette and the colors in my palette, but we're just having a little interlude. In this interlude, I'm going to cover a very important topic, something that applies to not just watercolorists, but painters of all kinds, and that is tone. Well, in, in Australia, we call it tone. In other parts of the world, like America, I think you call it value. So tone, value, tone, value. Now, rather than me saying in this video, tone or value, tone or value, it's, I'd sound a, a bit like Stan out of Life of Brian. Right, of every man or woman, or woman to rid himself or herself. Or herself. I'm going to uh, draw this. I'm going to use the word tone, but occasionally I'll hold this up just to remind you, TV, tone and value. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me explain by using this cup. See this cup? It's got lots of tones in it, but we want to simplify the world as watercolorists and as painters, but as particularly as watercolors, into three major tones. Light, mid and dark. And you can have a couple of other tones as well, what we call accents, the really dark, dark bits, and highlights, the really light, light bits. But three major tones. And we split the world up like that. How do we split the world up like that? Well, you have to squint like Clint Eastwood in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. I know it gives you wrinkles, but hey, we've all got to suffer for our art. So you squint, and what that does is it gets rid of detail. And you end up with this blurry kind of mass in front of you, but you can see the tones. Now, if I use this cup as an example, it's got lots of tones. But let's first of all change it to black and white to get rid of that red. The red's still there, but we're looking at it in terms of a grayscale, in terms of tone. And then we need to squint to get rid of any detail. Not that there's a lot here, but any detail. Let's make it a bit blurry using the computer. There you go. And you can see that it, you can start seeing masses, but let's go one step further. Let's let Photoshop decide light, mid, dark. And you can see that just with three tones, this cup still looks like a cup. With five tones, it has a bit more definition, if you like, or a bit more form. With 10 tones, even more. But we want to keep life simple, so let's look at three tones. But I can also do this. I, I've, I've cut out some shapes here. Look, it's just white, grey and black, or, you know, a couple of tones. I think I've got four tones here. But, and they're not exactly the right tones, but we've still got different tones. And look what happens when I put them together. There's a cup. You can't see it? Squint and look at it. Da! Looks like a cup, doesn't it? So it's amazing how little you need for something to start making visual sense. What happens though when you've got something more complex? More complex than a cup like that. Let's use this as an example. I have a basket full of mushrooms that my daughter and I found in a forest nearby. When you look at it, it looks quite busy. But when we change it to black and white, when we squint our eyes, when we try and look at it from an abstract point of view, when we're just trying to identify the large masses of light, mid and dark, this is what it looks like. Light, mid, dark. And we want to get those big areas. Without those light, mid and dark areas, it's not gonna work. So we have to get those. 
So how do I go about painting this? How would I go about painting this? Well, I establish those, I get those clear in my head, and then draw it out, and then I start painting. Now, in my first layer of paint, I don't worry about tones too much. Put down some local colour, the yellows, the reds, nothing's defined here, it's just running all over the place. I just get colour down first. There's a little bit of variation you can see here, but not a lot. Let's just pause for a minute and let's just look at the tone of this first wash. Out of interest, change to black and white, what's happening here. Not a lot of variation. You can see there's a little bit of dark on the right hand side, but not a lot. There's not a lot of tonal variation, just colour applied. Now in the second bit of the painting, I paint the negative space to cut out, in essence, the shape of some of these main mushrooms in the centre of the picture here. These are the mushrooms that I want to stand out. These are the ones catching the light. You can see them. I, I even put a little bit of detail in now. That's fairly early in a piece to get stuck into detail, but I've got a little bit, not too much. I start applying the dark tones on the right hand side where the mushrooms are in shadow. Suggesting a bit of dappled light, just letting the paintbrush dance around. There's not a lot of detail there as such. After all that's dry, then we start coming in with another tone and we start cutting around and putting really dark bits in to push out those mushrooms on the right hand side. Put a wash over the top just to push them back. It's basically a fine balance. You're trying to balance between those three major areas. As we come to the left of those mushrooms, the main mushrooms, we have a little bit of definition, but not as much, not as much contrast. Again, we put a little bit of detail in. And eventually what I do is I end up with this basket of mushrooms, but I keep on squinting throughout my whole process, not just at the subject, but at my painting. And if the abstract pattern of my painting is similar to the abstract pattern of the thing that I'm looking at, I know I'm on the right track. There's something I haven't told you. There's a little secret that I haven't told you. I actually, at the start of this painting, put some masking fluid on the painting in the area where I want the light to come through the basket. We'll peel that off now. You just rub your finger across it and you'll see that it comes off quite easily. Then I apply a green wash into those white areas 
to suggest green grass that I can see through the cane work of the basket that the mushrooms are in. And that's a really important part because it gives me a nice, cool contrast against all the warm colours of the mushroom in the basket. So here's the finished painting. Let's compare it to the photo of the mushrooms, to the picture of the mushrooms. Now, here's the mushrooms, the actual mushrooms. Here it is in black and white. Here it is broken down into major tones. Here it is as an abstract shape. Let's look at my painting. Here's the painting. Here's the black and white. Here's it broken down to the major tones. And here it is as an abstract. They're not exactly the same. You'd never expect them to be exactly the same. But generally, they are. For example, I haven't got all my darks over on the left hand side. The light areas aren't scattered all over the place. So I have the essence of the tonal pattern of these mushrooms. And that's, that's basically it. So whenever you've got a complex subject, don't panic, take a deep breath, squint those eyes like Clint Eastwood, establish the main tones, the light, the mid, the dark. Work out where those patterns are. Don't get caught up in detail. You've got to get those big masses because without those big areas, the little bits of detail aren't gonna make any difference. It's just gonna to become too busy. Try and look at things in an abstract sense. If you can do that, that will simplify your subject. It'll make it so much easier to paint, whether you're painting a cup or whether you're painting a complex subject. And it'll eventually come together, as did this one. Now, when you're driving home tonight, I know you're gonna be squinting. You're gonna be looking around and squinting. Just keep your eyes on the road, okay? So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments whether you use the word value or tone. Please give me a thumbs up. If you liked it, share it with your friends, anybody that you think might be interested or any lovers of watercolor or potential lovers of watercolor, just consider subscribing. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks where I promise this time I will do part two of setting up the palette. Have a great couple of weeks. Cheers.